Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I normally don't do unboxing videos because I'd rather look at the knife for a while rather than just talk about it and give first impressions. Uh, but I'm going to make an exception this time. I ordered uh, both of these knives through SMKW. I haven't ordered anything from them for a while. But they had a uh, free shipping deal going on leading up to Memorial Day. And there were two knives that I was interested in picking up, so I went ahead and grabbed them. And with that said, let's get started. Um, I've already cut the box open. I have not looked at either knife. And we'll start by looking at the uh, packing list. And you can see it there is the Uncle Henry Next Gen Staglon 23UH, the RR Reserve Original Barlow, and then there was also a Promo Clipster folding knife um, that you got if you spent over $50. So that's what I've ordered. Now let's take a look at what came in the box. Oh, before we show the extraneous stuff that came in the box, I was originally going to pick up the Queen Fish knife, but then I saw this for $14.88, the uh, Uncle Henry Next Gen Staglon, so I went and grabbed it instead. Um, well, you know what? I'm on a budget. I don't get these things for free, so. Anyway, the other stuff that came with it, uh, two stickers, the Blade sticker, I guess if you're an Atlanta Braves fan, you'll like that one, and then your typical sticker. Um, I can wallpaper my basement with all the stickers I've gotten from them. And then the uh, extraneous other uh, advertisement stuff. And the ever popular return form. Alright, let's start with the clipster. This is the freebie that they sent me. And it comes in this uh, container. Ah, yes. I thought so. It's a true utility kind of thing. Uh, and it's supposed to be like a money clip. These containers are really nice. I mean, if you want to keep something dry, uh, this container will work pretty well for you. And it is uh, watertight, so actually the container is sometimes better than the, uh, geez, come on, ah, there we go. Container is sometimes better than the actual product inside. Uh, and this is, uh, well, a Sharpie blade thingy. Uh, and a true utility clipster. Um, kind of like a modified, uh, Warncliffe or whatever you want to call it. Reverse Tanto. Sharp edge up there. Kind of an interesting thing. It'll probably go into... Uh, I'll probably be giving it away. I'll probably keep the container though. Anyway, it was free. What do you expect? Now, if I were actually polling an audience, you know, like if I were live, I could uh, actually poll you guys and ask you which do you want to see first, but you're not here. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip a coin and... Uh, Heads, it will be the um, Uncle Henry. Tails, it'll be the Rough Rider Reserve. So let's see what happens. Tails, it will be the Rough Rider Reserve, which is good because you know what? I'm actually more excited to look at the Uncle Henry, but um, I think most of you guys are probably more interested in the Rough Rider Reserve. So let's break them out. So there's the uh, Rough Rider Reserve. Here's the Uncle Henry box. Um, and you see here, American Outdoor Brands now. All right, so start with the Rough Rider Reserve. As you already know, it's gonna come in this black Rough Rider Reserve box. Let's see if I can get it open without screwing it up. Uh, everyone, you know what? I don't care because I'm not saving the boxes anyway. I've actually cut up one of the boxes to use it uh, to make like a, uh, a sticker out of the Rough Rider Reserve area there. Anyway, you get your tin. We already know about the tin. If you don't, look around. They're all over the place. Knife comes in your Rough Rider Reserve uh, packaging. Got your silica gel and your foam. We all know all about that. So what we really want to know about is the knife. It is the Barlow brand or Barlow pattern rather. And um, it's typical of the Rough Rider Reserves, you know, packaging is all the same. And here we have it. Um, now as, if you follow the channel, you know I have um, been really more of a critic of the Rough Rider Reserves than a big fan of them. 
I know I'm supposed to be a big fan of them because I really like Rough Riders, but uh, I gotta tell you, the finish on this is really pretty good. Uh, the nickel still, I think that's nickel silver. If it isn't, it should be. Um, pins are nice. The, you got the brass lanyard uh, hole there. Uh, and everyone, I guess, complains because there's no way you're going to pass a paracord through there. But you know what? I'm not going to pass a paracord through there if I'm making a lanyard or using it for a lanyard. Let me see something here. Okay, here we go. Your typical... Uh, this is the smaller uh, gauge of the ball and chain stuff or the chain pull stuff. It goes right through there, so that's good. So if I want to use this for a lanyard, I can use that. Shoelace. Yep, typical shoelace will work too. And really, if you're really talking about a functional lanyard, a uh, shoelace is probably the best thing going. So I'm I'm thinking the lanyard hole is just fine. You could also uh, create your own little uh, clevis for there and put it in there too. So I think the lanyard hole is just fine. You got the swedge and the uh, pull. I would say the pull on this is about a five or a six. This is you saw it. I pulled it right out of the can. Lockup is fine. It probably needs to be flushed out a bit, but lockup is real good. Half stop is good. And the fit and finish is really good. Um, yeah, it's a $40 knife. The micarta, the brown micarta looks pretty good on here too. I do like it. Um, yeah, you got the double rings on the, uh, uh, the nice, uh, bolster up there. I do wish they would have, instead of having the uh, shield there, if they would have engraved the uh, shield into the uh, bolster and just had plain micarta, that would have been a step up for me, but I get it. They don't do that. People have said the shield is pinned. And yes, it is. It's actually, is it? No, it is not. There is a pin down there, but it is not for the shield. So whoever has said that the shield is pinned, they're wrong. There is no pin here for the shield. The pin they're seeing is the front pin here. You got that pin, and then you also have a pin for the barlow. I'm I'm sorry for the uh, for the uh, bolster. So the bolster is pinned. Then you have this pin. There's a pin for the bolster right around here. And then you have the other two. Um, well, that's for the back spring. And that's for the back spring. So the folks who say that the shield is pinned uh, are wrong. Um, Rough Rider Reserve. Uh, this is the RRR 017 ND2 and made in China. Actually, I would prefer if they would just go to VG10. And I wish they would go to... Uh, to a mirror polish finish on them, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with this one. I, I will give a more thorough review of it uh, when I look at it a little longer, but for right now, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, um, not at all uh, upset with buying it. It looks pretty good, and yeah, there is definite, yeah, you've got the, uh, yeah, they got the uh, stop down there and uh, the action is really smooth, so it's pretty good. Um, let's move on to Uncle Henry. Now, as I said, I, I'm actually more excited to see the uh, Uncle Henry, mainly because this is the Next Gen uh, 2 or Next Gen Staglon, whatever they want to call it. Um, but they have improved the uh, type of the old Staglon that uh, you used to see on... Uh, on uh, you know, that icky yellow staglon that looks like a, uh, a plastic turd that's got black lines running through it. Yeah. Anyway, once again, let's get the box open. Here we go. Wrapped in paper. <laughs> and there you have it. 
So now it's a, a little more white than yellow. Uh, and it is, um, I don't know if it's Delrin or some other thermoplastic. I think they've said that it is Delrin. I don't know for sure. It is made in China. Both of these knives were made in China. Uh, but I do want to say that I do believe that that looks a whole lot better. Like I've mentioned uh, uh, on a couple other channels where they have shown this stuff, it looks like um, like a uh, European uh, elk antler. Hold on just a second. Here we have some actual antler on a different scout knife. And uh, you can see the difference there, but uh, definitely not the same. But it's got a lot of good character going on with the uh, with the Delrin here. I do like the way it looks, and I like that shade of brown and uh, the, uh, the lighter uh, cream color in the background as opposed to the yellow that they were using. And this is their um, camp knife. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna, no, I'll do a more thorough review of this one later too. Got the uh, blade, you know, the uh, can opener. Feel a little grinding going on there. A little grinding going there too, it's very dry. Got the punch. Pull on this is about a three or four, actually more like a four or five. Uh, there is no half stop on this. See there, Uncle Henry, the 23 Uncle Henry there. Uh, nickel silver bolsters, looks like uh, brass pens, nickel silver shield. And uh, I think they say the blade steel is a uh, 7CR. Might be wrong on that, I'll have to look it up. When I do the uh, full review, I'll uh, tell you more about it. But uh, yeah, I definitely think this looks better than the uh, other um, Staglon that they used to use. This this next gen Staglon looks a whole lot better. And I tell you what, it, uh, it will definitely give a run for the money for the, uh, for the Staglon that uh, uh, Rough Rider is doing now. I'll have to grab one of those two and then I'm going to compare them side by side. But 1488, I had to go ahead and grab it. And as you can tell, these have a satin finish. There's definitely uh, more design for a work knife. They're, you know, it's one of those things where it looks good enough to uh, collect, but it's really designed to uh, throw in the pocket, carry, and use it, beat the snot out of it. And uh, it looks like it might be durable enough to do that. Uh, nickel silver bolsters, I believe this is a stainless steel um, clevis on the end here. Uh, that is an issue with it that the clevis can flip up that way because you know what that means. Boom. But uh, that's a typical problem with any kind of scout knife. So got brass liners there. Definitely uh, a little gapish right there. But again, 1488. You can see that. That's what happens when you pay $15 for a knife instead of uh, $40 for a knife. So little things like that you should be able to expect. If that was happening on this knife, I would be yelling and screaming right now. But it isn't. This knife is uh, solid. So in any case, um, pretty happy with both knives, actually. I'm pretty happy with the entire purchase. So uh, stick around um, for a future video on both of these knives, but for right now, I'm going to call it a day on this one. Uh, um, I would say, yeah, um, if you can get these for a, a deal, I would probably grab one. Um, you might want to stick around for a more thorough review in the near future. And the same thing with this one. Uh, but many people have already looked at this and, and have given it high praise. And I tell you what, I do not think the praise was out of place for this knife. Uh, if you're a Barlow fan especially, uh, um, this might be one that you're going to like. Um, if you know anything about like knives made by brother, then you know what the quality is of this. Uh, that's about where it is. Um, yeah, I think the Rough Rider Reserve line is picking up in the quality versus some of the earlier knives I have picked up in the Rough Rider Reserve line. This one is going to be showing up in another video real soon. I always pick on this knife. But anyway, um, 
if you bought this one and were very, very disappointed and said you'll never buy another Rough Rider Reserve, um, this might be the one to buy to give it a second chance. Uh, with that said, uh, I will let you go and uh, talk to you again soon. Okay, just a final observation on both of these knives. Um, and this is added a day later. Um, I'm really, you know, even at 1488, the, the cover should not be that loose. Plus, the more I look at this, and I went back and looked at the, uh, the official photo uh, at SMKW, this front cover is upside down and backwards. Uh, Uncle Henry should be over on this side, and it should not be upside down. So definitely a, a, a problem with this knife. It is not the way it should have been. So I will be contacting SMKW uh, about a possible replacement. Um, usually they're pretty good at that, but especially considering both covers are loose and the front one is upside down and backwards. Um, I edited out a spot where I said that the action on this was a little sloppy, and that's because the action on this is really actually perfect. It's really good if you're opening it right. I have no issues with this knife at all. I'm very impressed with this knife, and uh, I will be doing a follow-up video on this one for sure and show it with a couple other Barlows. There's so many things about this knife that I really like. And I was really uh, anticipating this knife. And I will tell you, I really like the way the covers look, but the build quality is not uh, quite as good as it should have been. So I want to grab another Uncle Henry and see if the issues uh, were with this specific knife or if it, uh, if it, if the next one shows up and it's not much better. So we'll see. In any case, that'll be the follow-up, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like to do uh, unboxings, because sometimes first impressions are not the best impressions. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.